I'm Garrett, and in this series, I'm exploring Italy for 10 days with my wife, Lauren. So let's jump right into our top seven tips for visiting Florence. Tip number one is to arrive by train. While you could fly into Pisa International Airport or the Florence Regional Airport, if you're already in Italy, the train system is by far the best way to go. Florence is right in the middle of three other major cities, Rome, Milan, and Venice. And by high-speed train, the commute from any of these three cities is less than two hours. That's us! We got a red train. This can go fast. We rode in from Venice on the Trentitalia high-speed train and found the ride extremely comfortable and enjoyable. When you book your ticket, you should look to arrive in the Santa Maria Novella station. Our second tip is to stay in the heart of Florence. Once you arrive in the city, there really isn't much public transportation available, but it's okay because the city is extremely walkable. We stayed at the Milu Hotel and it was less than a 10 minute walk from the train station. The hotel location also put us within 15 minutes walking distance from pretty much all of the major tourist attractions in Florence, including the Uffizi, the Academia Gallery, the Central Market, Michelangelo's Plaza, and the Duomo. Tip number three is to download the free audio tours before you go. If you haven't heard of Rick Steves, he is basically the grandfather of Europe travel guidebooks. Mr. Rick has a set of free audio tours, which happen to include the Uffizi and the Academia Gallery. Accessing these tours is super easy. Just go to the App Store and download the Rick Steves Audio Europe app. Once in the app, select the country and city you're in, and then pick the tours you're interested in and download them so they're available offline. And this is a great way to get a bunch of information without getting stuck in a large tour group or having to pay for an audio headset at a museum. Tip number four is to get your museum tickets in advance. Reserving your ticket and time slots online ahead of time is easy, and we'll leave the links to the official ticket websites in the description below. We snagged the first time slot for the Uffizi at 9 a.m. and then spent about 45 minutes inside. So you can pre-book your tickets online, but you still have to pick them up here. So there's a door all the way at the end of this gallery where you go pick up your tickets and then you can enter into that door where no one's at. Gave ourselves another 45 minutes to get from the Uffizi to the Academia Gallery, which allowed time for breakfast on the way to our 10.30 reservation. The line for everyone that didn't reserve their tickets ahead of time to the Academia Museum is insane. Much better for those who reserve their tickets ahead of time. Thanks a lot. Peep all those people in line at the Uffizi Museum. Don't be those people. Reserving these tickets in advance helped us avoid wasting time waiting in line on what was a jam-packed day. We've officially completed the Yufuzi, the Academia Gallery, as well as the Duomo, all before noon. Speaking of our packed day, if you want to see how we did all the major tour sites in a day, check out our most recent vlog. And we are hungry, so we're gonna go get some sandwiches. This brings us to tip number five, which is come to Florence ready to eat. Let's eat. There are so many great places to eat in Florence. We saved a lot of restaurants in our free downloadable Google Maps and left a link in the description if you want to reference it on your trip. If you're looking to try a lot of things in one place, we highly suggest visiting the Central Market. We ate a lot of food there. They got samples. We just got this huge pecan antipasti plate. Bacosha bread, thin crust pizza. Spritz. Chicken breast with the salad and some nice potatoes, which looks really good. How do you eat that filled with gelato. You should also not miss the famous focaccia sandwiches, which always draws a crowd. They are delicious. This sandwich shop has three lines. That's how popular it is. We're in line one. Line two's over there. And line three's right behind me. I guess everything worth eating is worth waiting for. And if you have a large appetite, like myself, we highly recommend eating a traditional Florentine steak. However, dinner spots will fill up fast, so tip number six is that we recommend you book a dinner reservation. This is 1.3 kilograms of steak, and it passes the three to four finger test. So I think we got a good cut. Our seventh and final tip is that you consider a day trip to a nearby town. Florence's central location puts it right in the middle of many desirable destinations. A lot of these famous locations like the wineries in Chianti or Multipociano 
are not easily accessible by train and require either a planned tour or a driver. We took the opportunity to visit Parma, home of the delicious Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, a balsamic distillery just outside of Modena, and a vineyard producing the sparkling red wine known as Lambrusco. There are some destinations which are easily accessible by trains out of the Santa Maria Novella station, including Pisa and Cinque Terre. In the next few vlogs, we're going to eat and drink our way through Mia Romana on a day tour from Florence. After that, we're journeying to Cinque Terre by train, where we're going to stop in Pisa for lunch before spending two nights in the beautiful coastal town. If you want to follow along with our travels, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next in Pisa. Ciao!